same type of program, but specifically for uh, military veterans and people in the military. Um, and then they also have additional support group services available. So uh, in addition to all of this, they also uh, have three socials that they hold, hold every single month. So these socials are fun activities and events that the clients and volunteers can attend. Uh, they are also free events, so anyone who is interested in the organization can attend these. They don't have to be clients and volunteers, but that's usually the people that do attend. Um, the activities can include a movie night, bowling, uh, lunch, and uh, arts and crafts activities. Um, and these events are intended to promote uh, community, friendship, and support for the volunteers and clients. Uh, to come together and to have fun together and to uh, strengthen their friendship. Uh, so specifically, uh, I was uh, tasked to market the uh, socials for uh, the month of May. Uh, for those, we had a bowling night, which is the first one. We had a Cinco de Mayo luncheon, and then we had a Cinco de Mayo themed arts and crafts. So just to get into um, my qualifications for uh, this project, um, I am a strong writer with over two years of educational experience in public relations and uh, communications writing through Central Penn College here and also through LBC for a year. Um, I desire to work for nonprofit organizations upon graduation. That's probably the biggest thing here. Um, I really want to work with nonprofits once I graduate. Um, I want you to help make a difference in the world with uh, what I do, and I really want to work on the ground level with different nonprofit organizations to do that. Uh, so getting the experience that Tom Curry really is going to help me. I am skilled in creating content for social media, um, designing uh, graphics through the Canva platform, which is a web-based platform that you can use to design graphics for groups that I have flyers, social media graphics, pretty much anything uh, graphic-wise you can design on Canva. It's a really useful platform and it's free. Uh, what I'm using is free and I'm encouraged by a lot of students with it. Um, and I'm also skilled in uh, Microsoft Office platforms as well. Um, I can work independently and with a team. I am self-motivated and inquisitive. I have three years of leadership and team management experience through my part-time job where I manage a retail floor. And uh, probably most important, I live in Green Hills and Crown Fair, so the heat was not that long and I was able to be very close to the organization at all times. Uh, so three specific areas of communication that I focused on with my project. I focused on the social media content and strategy for Crown Fair. I focused on the event planning for the socials. And I focused on creating content for the website, as well as uh, using their email uh, description through their content contact account. So for the first section here on social media content strategy, Compere has three main social media platforms. They have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. However, prior to me starting uh, at this organization, they had not updated any of these platforms regularly at all. Uh, Instagram had not been used since 2017, and Twitter was not being used since late 2018. Um, Facebook posts uh, were infrequent and they barely received any type of re uh, limited reach or limited engagement as well. So for the first part of this uh, section here, I uh, started by creating a Hootsuite account uh, for computer that would allow me to schedule uh, and create posts under one specific platform for all three uh, social media accounts. So if any of you don't know what Hootsuite is, Hootsuite is a social media manager that allows you to schedule posts and to uh, create posts through that manager. So you don't have to create um, posts from every single uh, account. You can create them all in one section and then they just uh, get posted out from there. Um, I used the uh, free version of Hootsuite, so that only allowed me to schedule posts on the three platforms, which were perfect for me because I confidently only had three platforms. Um, I also scheduled, I could schedule up to 30 posts at a time. Um, but then there are certain options like the analytics uh, for the posts I was not available to utilize. Um, so I also, uh, the second part of this was I researched the post reach and the audience uh, for Compere's Facebook page. So the post reach generally just means literally how many people view your post in their timeline. And the audience analysis shows when the most people who like Compere's Facebook page are on Facebook. So that's where you can really get a chance of when should I post these, uh, post these events and these uh, posts to actually have the most amount of people to see them. So this is uh, just a snapshot of what the Hootsuite uh, calendar looks like. This is for the last week in May, I believe. Um, there's more posts there, but I couldn't obviously get the entire, uh, the entire feed. So this is just for several, several days. They usually tend to be one or two posts, or at least uh, one post a day, if not two. Um, and it shows that there's different, uh, the, the different platforms that are, the, that are using um, and the views as well as just that they were scheduled uh, to be published at a specific time. 
and this is an example of their earlier post week before I started working there. Um, so they, this is for the entire month of March to May. They only had six posts in that time frame. And as you can see, the post generally only reached about 50 to 80 people on average. This is a, uh, the audience analysis for Facebook. So this shows that, uh, I believe Compton has three or six tenants as of uh, this moment. Um, so this shows that uh, around 140, 150 people are on Facebook who like Tom Clear at 5 a.m., which is, uh, seems odd, but it's because of this is on some specific time, so this is 8 a.m. for us. Um, so the later the day goes, it actually increases. So around 6 to 9 p.m. is when most people who like Tom Clear are on Facebook. So I usually try to schedule my posts to be in the late afternoon, early evening, just for most people on the platform. So for the actual strategy, um, so the strategy that I utilized was that I would post once a day at minimum. Uh, usually I try to post at least twice a day, uh, just to increase the reach and to increase the engagement with our followers. Um, I would post content with a mixture of design graphics that I created or pictures that I took at the socials or anything that uh, might have been soccer related as well. Uh, to increase that engagement is generally posts that have pictures or type of, some type of graphic get viewed more often because people are more likely to actually stop and look at it because there's some type of uh, visual and then, of course, like I said, I scheduled posting in the late afternoon to early evening because that was just the general time frame I felt worked best. Um, but I did experiment with times just to see if there was any other times that could work as well. So the general timeline for my posts, I would usually, uh, for the so specifically for the socials, I would usually post um, about a week uh, prior to the actual event date for the social um, with some type of graphic that I created through Canva containing the relevant details for the event. Um, I would then create a Facebook event page for the social that would allow people to uh, respond if they would like to come or just have the details there so they could see them. Uh, then I would post a few days before the social as another reminder for the social to be, uh, that, that it would be happening. Um, and then as the social was occurring, I would use the Instagram stories feature to post during it uh, to see uh, real-time updates of the social and to get a time and screen of what was happening for people who weren't able to attend. And then after it was ended, I posted um, a bunch of highlights, uh, picture highlights that I uh, took while I was at the social so people could see uh, what happened if they weren't able to attend the social. So this is just an example of a post that I created. This is for the bowling social. Um, so I have the graphic that I created here, all the relevant details. I have a couple hashtags in the post. This is for Facebook. And as you can see, almost 300 people uh, reached, it almost reached, it reached almost 300 people, and there was a decent amount of reaction to the post. This is a post that I created for another, uh, for the crafts a social. This is for uh, Instagram, actually. Um, so for Instagram, I did a little, things a little differently. I added emojis into the content to add a little visual flair to it. And then I added a bunch more hashtags to using Instagram, the more hashtags you're able to post, the more likely people are to see it. So Instagram is a very hashtag-heavy uh, platform. <coughs> And these are just some examples of some graphics that I created that weren't necessarily for any social. I just wanted to highlight some of the other things because I was in charge of the social media. So I also just created the various graphics um, besides that. So this is the coffee and karate for a breakfast that we have for our veterans. Um, I have a prior, uh, prior uh, post uh, donation. And then we celebrated our 20th year in May. So I have a post for that as well. And the next, the next step that I would have obviously would be making the event page. So this is just the uh, event page that I created for a movie night in June. Um, I used the graphic as the picture, um, there's relevant details there, and then there's uh, people, I allowed people to respond to it, so we already had four responses to that event prior to it happening yesterday. Uh, and this is an example of, so the first, the left picture is the kind of post that I would first start out announcing the event, and then I would, uh, the second picture is the reminder to the event that I posted a few days before to allow people to, um, as a reminder that it was happening. And then this is just a couple of examples of the stories that I posted. So stories is really fun because it allows you to put little, um, like little graphics or emojis on it. You can make little short videos. You can add little captions. So um, I did that for these are for one each for each of the socials that I did for the month. And then I know that it's a temporary. Uh, so stories are usually pretty temporary. They only last 24 hours. But I also saved all the, so the stories that I made on the page so that if people were to view our page. They can see all the past stories. They can get a sense of what the social is like. And then this is an example of a highlight post that I did after the event was over. This is for the bowling event. 
Um, so again, it's a decent amount of views there, about 150 people, but there's a lot more reactions because people always like to see the smiling faces of the clients and volunteers at the event. So the second portion I have for my project would be event planning. So for our organization, we're really small, so we really don't have time to schedule anything. Um, for the social, uh, really in far in advance, it's usually kind of like one a day or two prior to it occurring. Um, and then many of our guests, our volunteers and clients, they don't have cars or they don't have the option to drive, so we have to uh, be able to carpool them all there to the event. Um, and obviously, depending on what type of social it is, we need food supplies needed. Uh, that usually has to be purchased like a day before, so we have it ready for day of. And then of course, when we get to the actual event, we need to have uh, set up ready before it happens, and then we tear down after it's over. So my general timeline for a social, um, it varies depending on what type it was. For the bowling alley was a bit different because we were actually at the bowling alley, we were in the park, the Camaro bowling alley. But the other two socials, we were just at a uh, room in a senior center in Lebanon that they have uh, kind of reserved on the like whenever they need it, they have it ready. Um, so usually we leave about an hour to a half hour prior to the start of the social with the necessary supplies for the social to pick up any guests that we have. I had one guest that I had to pick up two times for each of the socials, so um, I usually left about a half hour for them as much as we can be able to get home and get to the location on time. And then we would arrive at the location and begin to set up our event. Um, we make sure that the guests are signed in and they receive name tags. That's just for our purposes so that we make sure that we know the head count and how many people actually arrive versus how many people are RSVP for it. Um, and then we would hand out necessary supplies for the social. So for like arts and crafts one, we had to hand out paper plates, we had to hand out um, like construction paper that could be used. We had different paint tubes and paint brushes that we had for each, each person there. Um, and then for our uh, for some of the events, well, well, all the events we had, food and drinks, um, some more than others, for our ones we had, we made walking tacos, so we actually had to prepare them and get them to each of the guests. But for most of them, we just have like snacks and drinks ready for everybody uh, who would like some. And then at the end of the social, we ask them to tear down. So for the ones that are senior center, we have tables and chairs that we set up for every, uh, every single event. So once that's all set up, um, once the social's over, we have to tear all down and put that back in place before we leave. And then after that, we would drive our guests back home, and then we obviously bring our supplies back to the office. So the final portion of this is my content creation. So um, this is focusing, I focused on the events page on the Comcrew website. Uh, the socials page on the website that usually uh, had articles uh, highlighting the past socials but had not been up to date uh, prior to me starting there. And then I uh, utilized the constant contact email subscription list that they had not been using for a while there as well. So I was able to completely revamp the upcoming events page using a WordPress plugin that I had available. Um, with that, I was able to create each event had its own page that I was able to create, uh, put detailed information about each social with the date and location. Um, and, and as well as uh, how to RSVP for the event. Um, and then I was able to have all the events on the upcoming events page be highlighted in the easy to read list. I just had the date and time, and then we could click on the title if we wanted to keep reading and get more information about it. Um, and then after that, I also had the updated the socials page uh, with three articles that I wrote that detailed the highlights of each of the social, and then as well as utilizing pictures that I um, took when I was at the socials. And then I posted them on social media as well after the event. And then finally, I designed uh, different flyers and graphics that I could use to send out through the email or through our subscriber list about the socials. So this is just the uh, upcoming events page. This is how it looks now. Um, I'm not touching it because the first one just happened yesterday, so it won't be there anymore. But um, this is for the, all the month of June. Um, so this is, as we said, it's just the different socials, just the relevant information there. And if they wanted to learn more about it, they just click on the title and it would take them to an actual page that would give you more information. And then this is an example of the socials article that I wrote. This is for the luncheon. Um, so I have a little catchy title up there. I have a, a slideshow that has all the different pictures I took. And then I have a couple of paragraphs and just highlighting the different uh, events that were uh, different uh, things that occurred while we were at the socials. And then this is just uh, one of the emails that I sent out uh, to our subscribers. Um, I just had to take just a portion of it because I didn't click the, the entire uh, space there. But it's a flyer that I created that I then added to the email that just has all the details about every single social for the month of May um, and then relevant information if they wanted to learn more or if they wanted to contact us, they had the information available to them in the, on the uh, flyer as well. So through my uh, project here, uh, I was able to develop a social media strategy for Comfier. I was able to develop social media content and I was able to design graphics for that content. I helped to plan the socials and I was a part of the preparation for each social to research overall success. 
I updated the upcoming events and I was able and the socials website pages to reflect our many socials that we had. And I was able to send out emails about the socials to our subscribers to constant contact to increase that overall reach there. So if you would like to learn more about Compure or help us out in any way, um, so we obviously have our Compure uh, website, compure-lebanon.org. Um, you can go there and learn more about our services. If you'd like to volunteer, um, you can learn more about how to do that there. Um, obviously, donating to Compure will help every single dollar helps us. We're a very small organization, so we don't usually get a lot of individual donations. Um, we also have a uh, warrior fundraiser that we have every year. This one specifically is for raising money for our Compure Core program. Um, and we have it this year at a CrossFit uh, event, the CrossFit in uh, Cleona. Um, it's going to be like, you're going to be able to participate in fun CrossFit activities. And you don't have to be able to experience in CrossFit to uh, do that. Um, so that's something you can sign up for on our website. And of course, you can follow us on our social media too. Right? <coughs> So I just want to end here with, this is the mission statement for the Compure Incorporated overarching, uh, overarching organization. So Compure envisions a day when all communities embrace individuals and their families living with mental health challenges. Compure envisions a day when prevention begins early with children and their families. And Compure envisions a day when living, learning, working, and volunteering in the community is given expression through the social inclusion of all individuals and supported by the power of friendship and so that is Compure's vision. That is Compure 11 times vision as well. And I only hope that I was able to help them uh, with this vision while I was working there at their, uh, their system.